In this video, we'll be checking out the Saurus MTR bike rack. Now, I've got the two bike version, and the cool thing about this rack is that you can have different configurations. MTR stands for Module Tray Rack, I believe, and you can get a one bike version, a two bike. You can get add-ons to make it a three or a four bike rack. Now, if you've been cycling for a while, you'll recognize the design being very similar to another popular rack company, 1UP USA. So it seems that Saurus may have taken a play out of their book, but Let's see how they did with their version of this design. For me, this rack may be replacing my Kuat NV 2.0 bike rack, which is arguably one of the best racks on the market, and I'll explain why coming up in a minute. Before I continue this video, I wanna give a thanks and shout out to Rack Attack, who sent me this rack to review. If you're not familiar with Rack Attack, they're one of North America's largest hitch and rack experts. Not only do they carry Saurus, they also carry racks from Thule, Yakima, Kuat, and Rocky Mounts. And they're worth checking out not only if you're into cycling, but also if you need to carry gear for camping, kayaking, skiing, and other sports. Rack Attack has been in the business for over 25 years, and they have 19 stores throughout U.S. and Canada. Something that's really cool on their website is a rack wizard that's really easy to use, and you can match up the right rack for your sport and your vehicle. They'll actually actually ship most racks for free with most orders arriving within two days. So check out Rack Attack if you haven't already. Now let's check out this rack. We'll take a look at this thing coming out of the box so you can see how easy the assembly is. I think it's going to be pretty simple. I think this rack's pretty much ready to go out of the box, but we'll find out. But before I show the MTR, let's take a look at the Kuat MV 2.0, and I'll explain real quick why I may be replacing this one. Now, this is a solid rack. Like I said, this is one of the best racks on the market. The operation is really smooth. It drops down so easily. And I also like the little trail dock, so it's a little work stand. I don't use it very often, but when I do use it, I really need it. But the problem I've had with this rack is when I put the four bike add-on, and even sometimes with the two bike, I still have interference with the saddle and the handlebars. You know, there's been times where I've put the bikes on all four, I've taken them back off, I've moved the trays up and down, the wheel trays, and then I put the bikes back on, and it's just like a little puzzle, and I kind of got tired of it. So. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get rid of this bike rack, but if I really like the Saurus, then I will. So let's open up the box and see what you get. From what I can tell, this thing is pretty much fully assembled. So I'm going to pull all the wrapping off, get it out of the box, and I'll show you how it is to set up. This acts as a little bit of a handle to pick the rack up, and this is your release handle. So let's go ahead and slide it into the hitch receiver. Now it's time to put this pen in. And let me just say, I do like the racks like the Kuat that just have a knob and then you tighten it down and that will keep the rack from moving around inside the hitch receiver. This one uses the tension of this pen so it does have threads on it. I've used racks in the past where you had to use a tool, an extra tool to put this pen in. I like this one, the fact that it already has a handle on the pen. So that'll make it easy to do, like I said, without tools. So let's go ahead and put this in. All right, so I've got the hole lined up on the hitch receiver in the rack. I'll slide the pin in. It does come with a lock washer and a regular washer. So we'll just slide that in and then tighten it down. As you would expect, this does come with a lock so that you can make sure it stays on your vehicle. I'm gonna show you something really cool about this rack that I wish was on every hitch receiver rack, and that is this little pin. So you slide this up, put it against your hitch receiver, and that way the next time you install the rack, you'll know exactly where to position it so that the holes line up. What I've done in the past is I've just put some electrical tape right there, but this is gonna make it a lot easier. Before I drop the trays down and install a bike, I wanna show what this looks like with the trays up. So you can fold these up so that the trays don't stick out very far. So if you're driving around and you just wanna be careful that you don't clip anything with the trays, you can fold them up like this on the vehicle. Also, you can do this if you're gonna store it in your garage and you have a narrow space that you're trying to fit the rack in for storage. To drop the trays down, you would pull up on this knob and rotate them down. And this is what the rack looks like when it's folded up, which is the way I'll probably keep it when I don't have a bike on it. So let me go ahead and mention something here. The two bike version of this rack will only go into a two inch hitch receiver. You cannot put this in a 1.25, but the one bike version of this, you can 
put into a 1.25. You just can't do an add-on. As far as the rack's capacity, the one and two bike versions will allow bikes up to 60 pounds, so e-bikes are covered. If you get the three and four bike add-on, the bikes in the third and fourth position will allow bikes up to 35 pounds. And every tray accommodates wheelbases up to 53 inches. To drop it down, we'll just pull up on this handle. Very smooth operation. So when you bring the arm up, you're gonna hold this lever in the whole time you're moving it this way, and then you can let go and it ratchets that way. So let's go ahead and put a bike on this thing and see how it works. All right, so the first bike that we're gonna put on is the gravel bike. So I'm gonna raise the arms up. Now I looked on Saros's website and I believe for a 700C bike, like a road or gravel bike or cyclocross bike, we're gonna to have to move this down one. Now they do include an Allen wrench with the rack. It's stashed on the back side of the rack, but I'm gonna see how the gravel bike works with it all the way up. Cause I know they'll have to be all the way up for the mountain bikes. Well, actually, okay. I think we might be good. That works actually. Well, that's cool. That means I won't have to move these every time I you know, bring the cyclocross bike or the gravel bike. I mean, you know, it probably would grab a little bit lower. Let's just try it, Let, let's see. But that would actually be fine. I have no problems carrying the bike like that. So with the Allen wrench, let's see how quick this is to do. It's nice that they have a little ball on the end of the Allen wrench so you can just twist it like this. You don't have to get it perfectly in there. That's not too bad. I mean, I'll have to do this when we bring our BMX bikes. To the bmx track i'll show you something about this rack that i like that i don't think the one up has and that is this wheel block so what that allows is the bike to really stand up freely by itself and that way you know like look i have this off and the bike is actually really secure now obviously i wouldn't drive like that but it allows you know you to put this on without having to hold the bike with the other hand so just one thing, you know, listen, I've never used the one-up rack, so maybe the front wheel will hold just fine like that as well, but that keeps the front wheel really secure. Now we're gonna put on a mountain bike, and this is the moment of truth to see if I have any handlebar saddle contact, which I actually did with the Kuat, with the gravel bike and a trail bike. All right, here we go. Let's do the front wheel first. Yeah, I really like that wheel block. It, it, I mean, I don't even have to hold the bike. Okay, so with a gravel bike and a mountain bike, the only really contact I have is the handlebar contacts the wheel right there. Not a big deal. I mean, don't have to worry about anything getting scratched, but no contact there. You can see how the second tray is tiered higher than the first one. So the next thing we're gonna try is two mountain bikes to see how this works. Now I did not drop the saddle using the dropper post, but that's pretty good. Now, the one thing that I don't like about the wheel block is it's not adjustable. So the thing that I like about the one-up rack that I can tell is that you can really position the bikes from side to side. So if you had some frame contact, you could move one bike left or right. But this rack, it doesn't appear that you can do that with that wheel block. Now this is removable. So there are some Allen screws underneath. So in theory, I could take this off, which I may do, but for now I'm gonna leave it on. With two mountain bikes on, the clearance is perfect. Nothing contacts. One thing nice about this rack too, versus the one up from what I hear is you get more space between bikes. And by the way, you can put plus bikes and fat bikes on this. So you've got five inches of clearance. There is a strap for the rear wheel that I probably won't use just zipping around town. But when I go on the interstate, just a little bit of extra security. So everything is super secure. Let's talk real quick about the position of the holes on the arm. So the top one is for 27.5 and 29 mountain bikes. This one is for 26 inch wheeled mountain bikes and for road, cyclocross, gravel, whatever. This one is for 24 inch bikes, so BMX cruisers. And then this bottom hole is for 20 inch bikes, so 20 inch BMX bikes. So this rack does have locks. The way that this works is you just twist this sideways, pull it out. Same with this side, twist it, pull it out. And then you can put it around the frame, which is really nice 
for running into the store, going into a restaurant to get a bite to eat or whatever. So you would just take each side, put it around the frame. They're not real generous on the amount of cable that they give you. So you slide that in and then you take the key and just turn it to lock it. Like most high-end hitch racks, this one does drop down so you can access your lift gate or your trunk. So you would just go like that, support the bikes when you do it. I'll show how the bikes come off, which is pretty easy. But before I do, I just wanna show just how sturdy everything is. So I'm putting some pretty good pressure here on the rack, moving it around, and everything is really, really secure on this rack. So on this one, I've got the wheel strap. So I'll take that off. And then starting with the rear wheel, you just kind of push it forward, pull the lever in. So very, very easy to get the bikes on and off. And what's nice about this is it's really easy to do with one hand, which you have to do for the front one because you've got to hold the bike. I figured out how to keep the road bike from touching the mountain bike tire, and that is just put the mountain bike on first. This is why I went to college. So now with the mountain bike on, which is really what you should do anyway, right? You should put the heavier bike on first and then the lighter bike. Absolutely no contact with anything. So man, I uh, really liking this rack. I'll do another review after using this rack for a month or two to let you know how it works in the real world. But first impressions, this is a really good rack. I really like how easy it is to put the bikes on and off. I love the fact that nothing touches the frame at all, only the tires. And of course, I love how nothing on the bikes touch each other, even with the dropper posts up all the way. And what I'll probably do is get the two bike add-on to try this as a four bike rack. So stay tuned to the channel to see if I do that. Now, there are a few things initially that I would change on this rack to make it the perfect bike rack. One is I would do quick releases here instead of having to use an Allen wrench. It would be so easy to have a quick release. Now I know the one up you can get a quick release for these to move them up and down a lot easier. And something that's minor that may not be an issue after using this rack for a month or two, I'll find out. But that little wheel block, I wish that would just slide just a little bit, like it would just be a little bit adjustable. But you know, right now I've got no interference with any of the bikes that I've tried. And like I said, putting the road bike on, the gravel bike on second alleviated that problem. But I really like that little pin that touches the hitch receiver to put the thing in the perfect spot next time you put it on. So that'll wrap up this initial look at the Saurus MTR bike rack. If you've used this rack, let me know in the comments below what you think of it and how has it held up long-term and even in a lot of you know sun and rain and all that, how's the long-term durability of the rack? Any other questions or comments that you have, drop those below. Thanks for watching.